Alright, hi, I'm Aaron Pannerberg, Provost and Lead Instructor for the Wisconsin Historical Fencing Association, and this is my official apprentice and free scholar, Katie Kramlin. And, uh, and hi. And so what we're going to do is we're going to display and show you kind of the parts and pieces of the sword. A sword is not just a sword. Um, it has many different parts and pieces, and the masters of, of old say that each piece was designed and created for a purpose. But what we've discovered and what we've learned through the manuscripts is that even though it has one singular purpose, you use it for a lot of different things, especially as you start taking these things and making them a physical representation and not just an academic. The first part that uh, Katie and I will show is the pommel. The pommel, this round part at the end obviously, it comes in different sizes and shapes. The size of the pommel is built so that it counterweights the length and weight of the blade. And that's so, and we'll show you in a little while, but that's so when we get this thing moving, it moves more like a helicopter blade in your hands than a, than a straight up and down kind of slashing kind of sword. It's twirling and moving all around you almost like a baton. And that's kind of a unique feature of the European sword and the way it's meant to be wielded. So that pommel is directly in relation to the length and weight of the blade. Also, with the pommel, you know, literally I can pommel things. So she can bash me in the face with it. Um, it's great to use to display swords as they come in. Um, it also protects your hands surprisingly well. I can't tell you how many times people have uh, struck at my hands and it's hit my pommel. So it's kind of one of those things where that's, that's big enough there to give me a, a nice piece of protection on the back of my hand. And swords actually hit it quite often, surprisingly. Uh, now we're talking about the grip. The grip is this piece right here, obviously, the, the part that you, you hold on to, obvious. One thing about these grips, though, they, they differed in terms of their length and style. What Katie has in her hand here is called a wasted grip or a bottleneck grip. Obviously, you can see the shape of it is kind of like a bottle. And the idea here is your lead hand grips this part, and the back hand, the left hand, is almost kind of doing a very light scissoring kind of thing back here, just a pinching. And uh, you use that in a very versatile way. This grip is a little more traditional, it's a little more conical, it doesn't have that wasted kind of grip. What's the difference? You know, it's all a bit of style. These things were like firearms to them of the day. Some people liked 40 caliber, some people liked 22 caliber, some people wanted 223. It just depends on their individual preferences for the sword. Yet the concepts for wielding these things was very similar, no matter uh, the type. Now we're going on to the cross. This cross in its entirety is called the cross, but also each piece here is called the quillium. These quillions differed in terms of their length and style and makeup. Some of the, uh, the historical pieces had little spikes on the end. Some of the historical pieces were very short, some very long. Again, it's a very stylistic kind of thing, dependent upon the individual warrior's tastes. Now let's look at the form of these blades. This particular blade is very uh, parallel in nature. It tapers a little bit, but it's got uh, pretty uniform edges. Her sword hover has this flange that cuts in, and then a very narrow blade. The difference between these two swords is this. This one, in form, kind of mimics an actual sword that they would take out into combat and use on the battlefield or for self-protection, self-defense. This is called a feather sword, or feather sword, or also sometimes called a schoolfechten weapon. Basically, this, this sword is built for the martial arts hall. This sword is built for training. The reason why these little hooks here are meant to engage another sword and keep it at the perfect position with which to wind and bind off each other. And we'll show you that in a little while. And obviously this thinner blade delivers less mass, so it's a little bit nicer to your opponent in training. This one, a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker. There's a little bit more mass there, and uh, it's gonna deliver a little bit more of a wallet. So that's the differences. In addition to the actual pieces of the sword, we have different components to the weapon. The blade is not the blade. The blade has many components to it. Those components correspond like this. We'll start at the hilt first. This piece, the piece about halfway to the cross, is called the strong. The strong of the weapon. The reason why it's called the strong is because Katie is smaller than me, right? And I'm bigger than her. And if she puts her weapon here in my strong, I can easily push her weapon out of the way and hit her. Conversely, if my weak is in her strong, she can also easily push my weapon out of the way and hit me. No matter how big or strong we are comparatively. So if you learn to use the weapon properly, it doesn't matter how big your opponent is, you can displace whatever that opponent throws at you and hit them with ease. Then from about the middle to about here is called the middle of the sword. 
And that's kind of a no man's land. It does a little bit of uh, everything, depending. And then the weak of the sword, which is what I showed you before about the hands whipped down from the tip. And again, the weak is delivering the cutting surfaces to the opponent. It's also delivering the point with which to thrust. The thing about the weak is it's very agile and fast. If she tries to bind on my weak, I can easily pull that away and cut her, hit her, stab her, etc. So you don't want to bind an opponent's weapon on the weak, it's just too darn fast. So each of these components does different things, and that's very important to swords people who are learning this art. So, uh, folks, if you want to know more, please go to our Facebook page. That's where we post all of our most current information. And it is at... Wisconsin Historical Fencing Association, WHFA. So when you type that in, you're looking for this logo, a little badger with the sword, so that'll help you find us. Bye.